Good morning, and welcome to Daily Morning Prayer. This is for Thursday, December 10th. We're continuing out of Common Prayer, a Liturgy for Ordinary Radicals. And we begin with a commemoration of Thomas Merton. Thomas Merton pursued the ideals of pleasure and freedom in early adulthood, only to reject them as an illusion and embrace a life of prayer and silence as a Trappist monk. His 1949 conversion story, The Seven Story Mountain, <clears throat> was a surprise bestseller, introducing millions of modern people to the gifts of monasticism. <clears throat> a mentor to many activists in the Catholic peace movement, Merton became a prophetic voice for peace and nonviolence in the 20th century, despite the fact that his, quote, political writings were censored by his order. Convinced that contemplative life must engage with the world, he prepared the way for a new monasticism. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Our song for this morning is Be Thou My Vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day and by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence, thy light. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 54, verses 1 through 6. Save me, O God, by your name, and your might defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Our Old Testament reading continues out of Isaiah chapter 5, verses 13 through 17, and then we hop ahead to verses 24 and 25. This is why my people will go into exile, because they don't understand that their multitudes are starving and their masses are collapsing from thirst. Therefore, the grave licks its chops and opens its mouth wide beyond measure, and down goes that multitude, those masses, that jubilation, that revelry. Humanity will bow down and humankind will be humbled, and the arrogant will be forced to lower their insolent gaze. But the Lord Omnipotent will triumph through justice and reveal holiness through righteousness. Then the sheep will graze as if in pasture, fatlings and kids will feed among the ruins. As tongues of fire lick the stubble and chaff withers in the fire, so your roots will rot and your blossoms will crumble into dust. For you rejected the instruction of the Lord Omnipotent and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. This is why the Lord, a fire with wrath against the people, stretches out a mighty arm to strike them down. The mountains quake and corpses litter their streets. Even now, God's anger is not abated. Even now, God's arm remains outstretched. Our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 13. Now the feast of the unleavened bread, also known as Passover, drew near. And the chief priests and the religious scholars sought a way to kill Jesus, for they feared the people. Then Satan took possession of Judas, who was called Iscariot, one of the twelve. He went to the chief priests and the temple guards to discuss with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. Jesus, Judas accepted, then began to look for the opportune moment to hand Jesus over to them when people were not present. 
When the day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread arrived, when the Passover lamb was to be sacrificed, Jesus sent Peter and John out with the instructions, go and make the preparations for us to eat the Passover. They asked, where do you want us to prepare the Seder? Jesus answered, when you enter the city, a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him to the house he enters. Say to the owner of the house, the rabbi asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover Seder with my disciples? The owner will show you a large furnished upper room. Make the preparations there. They went out and found everything as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Thomas Merton wrote, The monk does not come to the monastery to, quote, get something which the ordinary Christian cannot have. On the contrary, he comes there in order to realize and to appreciate all that any good Christian already has. He comes to live his Christian life and thus to appreciate to the full his heritage as a son of God. He comes in order that he might see and understand that he already possesses everything. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, teach us to live as contemplative activists, trusting that your spirit and your word provide all we need to dance with the angels on Jacob's ladder between heaven and earth. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. <laughs>